Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the background size property for background images in CSS. And there are four different syntaxes that the background size property can use. And we're going to be taking a look at each one of those syntaxes and seeing how they differ so we can get a handle on when we might want to use one over the other. All right, so let's get going. So here I am in VS Code, and on the top here I have my index.html file with some basic boilerplate HTML. On line 7, I'm linking to my external style sheet, which is called styles.css, and I have that open here on the bottom portion of the screen. Now for this tutorial, I'm using very, very simple HTML. In fact, I only have one div here with a class of container, and we're going to be using that div as a container for our background images. And just so you know, in my file directory, I have a folder here called images, or IMGS, and inside for right now I have three different images, and I've labeled them here with their dimensions, width, and then height. So let's go ahead and let's make a rule for this container class div here. So we'll say dot container, and then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a border, We'll do two pixels, solid red. We'll make it red just so we can see it. And the image that I'm going to pull in here is this first one here with a width of 524 pixels and a height of 343 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my container the same width that the image intrinsically has. And I'm going to do the same thing for the height of the container. I'm going to give it 343 pixels. So we have the same width and height of the image for the container. And here you can see the container here. I'm going to give it a little bit of margin, just so we can see it a little bit better, move it away from the borders of the viewport. And now let's go ahead and let's pull in our background image. So if you don't know, the way we do that is we do background image, and then we do URL, and then in parentheses we put the name of the file. And actually what I need to do, because it's in the images directory, I need to put images first and then slash, and then the name of the file is 524 by 343.jpg. And there you can see the image of this cute dog here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background repeat property. I'm going to set that to no repeat because it repeats by default. And even though we don't see that here, that'll interfere with what we're going to do coming up. So now the reason that I'm starting out like this is because I want to show you that the default background size, when you bring in a background image, is its intrinsic width and height. And as we can see here by the name of the file, 524 by 343, our image itself has a width and a height which are exactly the same as the width and height of the container. So this background size, the default background size, is really auto. So if we save it, we can see there's no difference. Right, so if we just wanted to use our background image at the same size that it is, we don't even have to declare this. We can comment it out, save it, and see it's the same. So background size, by default, is auto. And that's the first thing to know. Now this situation that we found ourselves in was very easy because our background image's size was exactly the same as our container's width and height. But we could find ourselves in the situation where our background image is of a smaller size than the container. As well, we could find ourselves in a situation where the background image size is larger than the size of the container. And so let's take a look at how we can deal with that. Let's actually go ahead and we'll make our container size larger. We're going to give it a width of 824, and we'll give it a height of 534. And as you can see now, the image is a lot smaller than the container size. So here we're going to talk about the first of the four syntaxes which I mentioned. And the first one is called the one value syntax. So let's come down here and let's create a background size property. And as the name suggests, one syntax means that we just give it one value. And that one value is going to account for the width of the image. So in other words, if I give this background size a value of 100%, this image is going to automatically fill up 100% of the width of this container. And as far as the height, the height is going to be set automatically by the browser to be whatever it needs to be in order to preserve the aspect ratio of the image. So let's try that. Let's give it that one value of 100%. And check out the image here as we save. You can see that the image, it expanded or stretched to fill 100% of the width of the container. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that there's a little bit of space left. Because the aspect ratio is preserved, 
The height in this case wasn't enough to fill up the entire container. Let's actually increase the height so we can see more of that space there. There we go. So you can see how using background size in this way can be useful to you. Because maybe I want to create kind of a card where I have this image on the top and then maybe some text or a title here on the bottom. And by setting the background size with just one value, I don't have to worry about the height. I know that my aspect ratio of my image is going to be preserved and I can fill up 100% of the container automatically. Now as far as the values, 100% here is very convenient for what we were trying to do here. But really you can use any length unit here as a value. So I can give it an exact pixel size if I want. Like let's say I try 300 pixels. Well now if we look at the width here, yeah we can see that's 300 pixels wide. And again the height scales accordingly to preserve the aspect ratio. So you can use whatever length unit you want here for background size. You can use M's, REM's, pixels, percents, VM units. It's up to you. Now we don't always want the aspect ratio to be preserved necessarily when we're scaling or sizing our image. So this is where the two value syntax can come in handy. So let's get rid of these background size declarations here. We don't have anything set at the moment, so remember that defaults to auto, which is the original image size. And let's experiment with that two value syntax. So let's declare background size property here. And just like its name states, this one takes two values. The first one is for the width, and the second one is for the height. And this is why we can alter the aspect ratio, because we have control over both the width and the height here. So let's say I wanted this image to take 50% of the width of the container, but I wanted it to take 100% of the height. So there's our two value syntax, our width and our height here. And let's save and check out the image. And here you can see we have 50% of this container as far as width, but 100% of the height of the container. And as I said, the aspect ratio is going to get skewed here. You can see how weird the image looks now. But depending on what you're trying to do and the image that you're working with, you might want that kind of control. And just for fun, let's try using some other length units here. Let's just randomly try 250 pixels for the width. And let's try 500 pixels for the height. So we have 250 pixels wide, 500 pixels high. So now let's keep moving forward and let's look at the third syntax. And this one is called the keyword syntax. We've actually already seen one of the keywords, and that is auto, but that's just the default. So we've pretty much got that one taken care of. The other two keywords, which are the ones that we're going to be looking at here, are cover and contain. Let's look at contain first. So let's get rid of this background size declaration here. We'll save, and we're back to our original image size. Well, to see contain and what it does, let's just try it out first. So we'll do background size, and we'll give it a value of contain. Let's save, and let's notice a couple things about what just happened. So first of all, you can see that the image, the width, has expanded to fill up the entire width of the container. However, it didn't fill up the entire height of the container. So what contain is doing in this case is it's expanding the image, or stretching the image, to fill up the container, but it stops in this case, once the width meets the edges of the container. You see, basically the mandate of the contain keyword is to fill up the container, but to always show the entire image. So once the container can be filled in terms of width or height, then the image basically stops expanding. As you can see, the aspect ratio is preserved, and that's why this image can't fill up the entire height of the container, and still completely show itself in the container because then the aspect ratio would be skewed. So let's now take a look at the cover keyword. And by looking at cover, we'll be able to draw a comparison between cover and contain to get a better idea about the differences and how they both work. So let's comment at background size contain. Let's save again just to get back to our default starting point. And now let's do background size. And let's do cover. And let's save and check out what happens to the image. And here you can see the difference. Now in this case, the image expanded or stretched to fill up the entire container, both in terms of width and height. But what you probably notice as well is that the image is cropped. So when you're using cover, 
it's possible that the image can get cropped. And you can see why it would have to get cropped. Because of the aspect ratio, in order to expand this image and cover the entire container here, without destroying the aspect ratio, the only way to do that would be to crop some of the image. So whereas with contain, its mandate was to stretch the image but to always show the full image, with cover, its mandate is to cover the entire container and to crop if necessary. And then our fourth syntax is called the multiple background syntax. So with background image, if you don't know, we can actually bring in more than one background image. And we do that by separating the URLs with a comma here. So we're going to bring in a second one. So I'm going to go into my folder and I'm going to use this one here. So in the parentheses, I'm going to put in IMGS, which is my folder. And then the name of the file, 5628, which is a width, times 3752.jpg, 3752 being the height. So I, I wouldn't actually name my files this way, but just for the sake of this tutorial, so we can explicitly see the width and height easily of these images. So let's close that. And let's get rid of this background size stuff here because we're going to be redoing that in a second. So let's save so far and see what we have. And since we don't have any background size here, what you can see is we have this image of the dog overlaying on top of this larger image in the background here. And as you can see by the dimensions, the second image, this one, is much larger than the first one. And without any background size property, the default is going to be the intrinsic original image size. So for the multiple background syntax, I have the ability to set a different size for each one of the images. And all I have to do is set the size values and separate them by commas for each of the images. So let's say for this first one here, we want this to be 50% of the width. And for this value, we're going to use the one value syntax. So remember, 50% is going to say this should take up 50% of the container and its height will be set auto. So its aspect ratio will be preserved. And then for the second one, let's also use the one value syntax for now. And let's give that 75% of the width. And now let's save. And here you can see the first image of the dog taking up 50% of the width of this container. And this ostrich here in the back is taking up 75% of the width of the container. But maybe we want to see this background image a little bit better. Let's give it 100% of the width. So the cool thing is that we can affect each one of our images just by separating the sizes here by a comma. If we had more URLs, we could use the comma as a delimiter to affect each respective URL. And the thing is that for each of these background sizes, we can use any of these syntaxes that we saw previously. So let's say for the first one, I wanted it to be 50% of the width of the container, but I also wanted it to be 100% of the height of the container. So here I can use the two value syntax as long as it's before the comma, it's going to affect this background image. So let's save. And there you go. You can see that the dog is now taking up 100% of the height of the container and 50% of the width of the container. And maybe for the ostrich in the back, we want to use the keyword syntax. So let's use cover for that. And now you can see that the ostrich has expanded to cover the entire container. And of course, you're only seeing part of it here because these are stacked on top of one another. So thanks for checking out this video all about the background size property for CSS background images. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what other topics you'd like to see covered. And consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.